So as you can tell by the title, like I said, this might be my final video. I've been going back and forth with God on whether or not, you know, I, I've been telling him for a while now that I really don't want to do this, that I don't want the ministry. And it's like he keeps forcing it upon me and keep making me move forward. But I don't want the ministry anymore because it's not that I don't want to help people because that was my entire intention to help people. But it's become a little too much for me to even bear at this point. And it's like I'm not getting anything out of this but abuse and pain and suffering and misery. And when God first told me I was going to have a ministry, like I said, I was excited. So I thought, truly, I was led to, to believe that I was going to have a ministry working, working with young mothers and their children and writing books and sharing my talents, using my talents, you know, to, to, to help edify God's kingdom. But instead, what I got was something completely different. And as I'm making this video today, it's my daughter's 19th birthday. She's a, my disabled youngest daughter, Cherish, who's in foster care. She's been in foster care now for three years. It's been three years. Um... And this will be the fourth birthday that she's spent in, in foster care. As you know, she's first taken out of the home a week before her 16th birthday. So I missed that birthday. And this is the this this is like the fourth birthday where she's away from our family. We got to experience her 17th birthday with her. But other than that, all the other birthdays I missed out on. And it's like, it's, it's kind of bittersweet. Because I'm sitting here separated from my daughter. Separated from my son. My only son. Um... And I'm, I'm like, you know, when I went into ministry, I didn't expect for all this to occur. I didn't expect to have my entire life destroyed and ruined. I didn't expect to be separated from my children and watch my children endure abuse and suffer. And I can't do anything about it to the point now. My son is sitting in a group home. In a group home and he has a felony charge and he can't even see his sister for her birthday. He probably won't even be able to see her graduate. She's graduating in May. And, you know, he's a little upset about that. The fact is, yes, my daughter's about to graduate from high school. So it's a monumental experience for her, a monumental achievement. I'm very proud of her, but I can't help her plan for this graduation. I can't experience the day-to-day, -day, you know, joys that she has and how she experiences her life, the ups and downs, her attitudes about this moment, her excitement. I get to go to the graduation, but it's like, I can't help her plan that prom. My youngest daughter, my last daughter, I can't help her pick out her prom dress and, and, and help her get her hair done and, and put some, style her hair and put her makeup on. And, you know, that, that was taken away from me. I'm happy that I have my daughter. I'm happy that I'm allowed to go to the graduation. But it's like those moments can never be returned to us. And it's like, yes, I wanted to help people. But when I came into ministry work, I did not believe that. I would be abused and mistreated and ostracized. And I did not like the fact that God would put other people's burdens upon me. Young, grown, able-bodied men and women who don't have a problem with me. They have a problem with how they were raised. The people who raised them, they have a problem with their parents, their mothers, their fathers, their uncles, their aunties, and all these other people in their lives who did not raise them right, who did not do right by them, or who did something wrong. They have a problem with them, but because they have these issues, and they don't go to the source. They can't get the, to go to the source to get the problems reconciled. They come to me and they project their anger and their hatred and all their disappointment and frustration out on me. And that's basically what this ministry has been. Me being around all these people who hate me. All these people who hate, well, misdirect their anger and hatred towards me because of the fact they have parents who do not do right by them or adults in their lives who do not raise them properly and what they have suffered and endured as children and they have held on to that and they have not gone to God to get these problems to get healing from these issues and deliverance but instead they want to walk around with a grudge and a chip on their shoulders and they feel that i owe them something because god has put me in ministry it's not that i don't want to help you i don't mind praying for someone and assisting people but it's like i'm not going to be the scapegoat i'm not going to let you justify whatever you do and do wrong to me because you feel that you have a right now you're entitled to treat me any kind of way because how mom and daddy treated you or how your uncle and auntie did you or how your grandma did you years ago and it's like these people want to hold on to all these issues instead of going to God to get the help they need and the deliverance and healing that they need. And they want to have a justification to treat me any kind of way and destroy me and my children and my family as if I don't take hurts and abuses. And it's like I keep trying to tell God that he's like work on your heart. And that's what I've tried to do. But I told him, I said, Lord, I can't give these people the love that you want me to give them because of the fact my, I was wounded myself. And that's what people don't understand. You come to me because you say, oh, God, it has me in a ministry and I don't mind helping people. The whole reason I wanted to help children, mostly young mothers and children, is because I grew up in a household where I was mistreated. 
I grew up in a household where adult men and women hated me because they didn't like my mom or for other whatever hangups they have with themselves. They took all of that anger out on me and they crushed the spirit and soul of a small child. And I told God, I got crushed in that house. I was destroyed. They mistreated me. They treated me unfairly. They took their anger out on me. They said things to me to, to demean me and criticize me and belittle me. And I held that pain inside for years as a child. I dealt with that pain. Not only that, my father abused me. He didn't show me the love I needed. He, he abused me. And I dealt with all of that. I dealt with the, the, the anger that my mom sometimes directed at me physically and verbally. I dealt with all of these people around me who had issues, who could not go to God themselves to get issues. So instead, they took it out on an instant child and destroyed her. Then after that, there was no refuge. When I left the house where I was being abused and mistreated by relatives and family and parents and close people who were, who were supposed to love me and endure me and, 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 and nurture me and protect me. But instead, they cast me down and destroyed me. I go to school and be teased and, and mistreated by my peers. There was no one to help me. I sat in the church and they overlooked me. They embraced all the other young women, young girls and boys, but they ostracized me and rejected me. They looked down on me. And I never got the healing and help that I needed. It took years. And I went out and yes, I lived a promiscuous life because I needed love. And I ended up having sex with all these different random men just to feel wanted by someone. But I still didn't have any love. So yes, I know what it's like to be hated. I know what it's like to be mistreated. But I went to God to get the healing that I needed. I went to God to fix my problems because he delivered me and he healed me. But right after he healed me, and it was not even three months, I couldn't even embrace the healing for three months. When he threw me out there and I started being abused, I didn't know what was going on. He started putting me across the path of people who had been severely abused by their own parents and were doing witchcraft and sorcery. And then these people have, have, have destroyed everything about me. I have been taunted. I have had my whole body destroyed from head to toe. I have been, been physically and emotionally subjected to abuse. I have been shamed and ostracized and ridiculed. I've been slandered. I've had my children taken from me. The only thing that I had. I wasn't allowed to have anything else, not a friend, not a college degree, not an education, not a job, not a spouse, not anything, not the love of my family. I didn't have any of those things. All I had was my children and he took that from me. And it's like, you want me to have a ministry where you allow me to be subjected to all types of pain and mistreatment, but you're not making these people accountable. You keep making excuses for grown men and women who, because they've been abused, I've been abused also, but I had to go to you because you're the burden carrier. And that's what I'm telling God. It's like, Jesus Christ is the burden carrier. I'm not. But you keep directing me to people who want to, 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 to justify and, and treat me any kind of way because they have a hang up with how their parents did them. And I'm not the source of their problem. Instead of going to the source who mistreated you and, and getting healing from there or going to God who can help you and deliver you, you want to hurt me and mistreat me. And it's like, I, I look at it and I'm like, Lord, yeah, I, I can change my heart. But the problem isn't that I have a heart issue. The problem is I have an issue with not getting justice. I have an issue with you tearing me down and destroying me over and over. I have already been abused and mistreated my entire life. Like I said, since a little girl, I had my spirit and soul crushed. And that is why I want to help other children. That is why I speak out so adamantly, sometimes to the point where, where it might seem like, you know, I'm so combative or defensive because I don't like to see a child mistreated because it reminds me of how I was mistreated when I was a kid. And I have spoken out, but now I have to sit here and be, 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 be made to watch my own children be mistreated. I can't do a thing about it. I had to sit here and let people just literally do whatever they want to do to me to the point where I'm put in a mental and emotional and financial bondage. Sometimes I feel like I'm in prison. God has me doing his work and people have been allowed to retaliate against me. Yes, he says, oh, they're demons and them, they're demons control them. But if a person doesn't go to God and give them their, their, their lives and submit to him, they can never be delivered of these demons and they're going to keep doing what they want to do. And they want, and they're doing it because they want to do it. And I should not be on the other end of their, their, their anger and their, dis their, their, their projection of their disappointment, whatever else is the hangups that they have. And this is why I said, I don't want to do the ministry work anymore. Cause it's like, I have to lay down my life literally and let everybody do whatever they want to me to the point you can come in here. You can lose demons in here to, to sodomize me and do it to abuse me. You can cut into my feet to keep me from running around. That was the only thing that gave me joy. I had to walk around in shame with all this fat on me after I lost weight two times and wrote a fitness book. I can't see any of my dreams. I can't get any desires in my heart because he have allowed people to take my life and destroy it. I can't experience monumental life moments with my children because all that was taken away from me. Because people have pitted themselves up against me and, and hated me because they don't want to go to God to get the help that they need for, for all the things that daddy did to them or mama did to them or whoever else so-and-so did to them. And I am not the source. All I tried to do was to minister to people. 
But it's like you, you project your anger at me. And it's like, Lord, I don't know. You tell me I don't do right because I cut the people. Well, how do you expect the person to feel when they have all this, this unresolved issue and pain inside of them? When I have never gotten any justice for all the things people have done to me to the point they put in curses on me, taken my entire life, destroyed my life, mistreated me as a child, neglected me, rejected me, slandered me, ridiculed me, caused me physical and emotional pain and abuse. And I've never gotten any type of resolution or justice said you just keep putting me in situations putting me upon people who are going to keep doing the same thing and you're just perpetuating my suffering you're perpetuating my misery like i said as i sit here today i have no money i can't buy my daughter a gift for her her 19th birthday i can't do anything for her my other daughter's birthday was two days ago i couldn't do a thing for her either I am sitting here in a financial bondage. No one's offered me any money. I have to go out here and pray for all his people and try to help them. But no one has to help me when I need anything. I can't work on jobs because God has used me to get his people out of bondage. He said he wanted his children free. He wanted his people free. But I go around praying and trying to minister to the people and help them and get them free. And instead, I get retaliated against to the point where now I have sorcerers and witches who are controlled by demons attacking me on every job I go to. Demon spirits completely harassing me and tormenting me to the point I wake up, like I said, choking. Sometimes I wake up with headaches. Sometimes I wake up in pain where I can't walk or move. I wake up with physical pain from head to toe. And it's like, I can't work a job because it's like people are attacking me on the job. Demon spirits are attacking me through the people on these jobs. So I don't have any money. I don't have a vehicle where I can go to the store. I look at my little grandson when he comes to see me and visit me sometimes. I can't even buy him toys to play with. A grandparent gets in their car and takes their ch grandchild somewhere and buys them stuff. I can't help with that because you've taken everything from me, put me in a bondage. You got me to do all your work, but you have not given me a thing. I have not gotten not one thing you've promised me. All I've gotten is abuse and pain. You've let a man do everything he wants to do to me and my children and destroy our lives. And, and you've let it be covered up to the point my kids are separated from me now because you're protecting this man. And I have to watch my only son be destroyed to the point he has a criminal record and you want to keep him caged up like an animal. And that is what I deal with. And it's like, I'm at the point where I said, Lord, I can't help help your people because it's like, I can't heal myself because you, you healed me, but you, you put me right back. You've allowed Everybody to keep abusing me and bring me back and subject me to the same thing I've grown up dealing with. And every time it's like I try to forgive and try to heal and try to love. You come right back and put another person in my face to do the same, same thing. And it's like I just keep getting abused over and over. I get no resolution. I get no justice for anything. And I have to keep sitting here and just, just allowing it to go on while people can say, oh, I'm crazy or I'm this or that. And no one has to help me. The church can look at me and look at me like I'm crazy. And it's like, I'm at the point where I don't care. I'm tired of suffering. I'm tired of being ostracized. I have not gotten any desires in my heart. I am have to walk around here and be completely alone, ostracized. I can't do anything. It's like I have no freedom. They have taken my whole life from me. They've taken my children. They've kept me from working. They have kept me from getting an education. They have destroyed my body. Everything I try to do, write books. They have attacked me and destroyed that. Kept me from selling my books. Cover up all my videos. I don't have anything. I cannot even live. I can't even go outside and walk around the corner, around the block without people coming outside or, or police riding past looking at me, you know, because God wanted me to tear down the fences in the neighborhoods. And so now they want to stop me from even walking around because he said his people are in bondage. Every time I do something for him, I get retaliated against. I was running because that was my freedom. That was my outlet. But you cut into my feet so badly and took it all my stamina and my energy and strength in my legs, put all this family to the point I can't even run and do the simplest thing of life. So it's like, what am I supposed to do here? What do you want me to do? I, I'm in a, a bondage for your people who don't want to help themselves. That's the thing. People who do not want to go to God themselves. And it's like you get mad because I, I put I, my, my priority. I focus my priority on what mattered most. I sat at home and prayed and got in the word and learned about God. But you're out here getting your education. You can get your business degree. You can go to school. You can start a business and focus on the things that are a priority to you. But I focused on God. And that's why I got my help. People focus on what's what's important to them. You put your time into what is important. And a lot of you don't want to put your time into God. So that's why you can't get your help. But you want to come to me and cast all your burdens upon me. Is that fair to me? It's not fair to me. And I'm tired of this. This is why I told God, I said, I don't want the ministry anymore. Because this is all the ministry is. I don't want it. I'm not watching anybody get healed. I'm just watching people who want to blame someone else for their issues and what happens to them instead of going to God and getting help and doing, putting forth effort to, to get the freedom and healing that they need. They want to put their burdens off on somebody else and blame them. And I'm tired of that. And it's like, that's why I feel like, like I said, I look up now and it's nothing but shame and misery. I've lost all, everything, all desires, my heart because of this. 
And it's like, yes, I tell God I don't want to do it anymore. I'm not, it's not that I'm being selfish, but I just can't keep bearing this. So for those of you who have been on my, my channel and, and supported me and watched my videos and truly helped me and those who other prayers me, I thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You know, I'm thankful for you. I really am. But I'm at the point where, you know, I really wanted to do something to help help people. I didn't want to be a scapegoat for people just to throw their burdens upon me and to be ostracized from my own family and be mistreated and ridiculed and rejected and destroyed to the point I sit here literally with nothing. No children, no money, no no anything, no real life. This isn't a life of, I'm not living any, I'm just here existing every day in a bondage that God allowed his people to put me in.